Awesome. All right. Kia ora et fano. You have landed at the New Zealand Institute of Building. We still have the flash of science in the world. And of course, this is your light lunch. We've got 15 minutes of fame for these two wonderful people sitting right next to me. And they are Guy Marriage and Brittany Irvine of medium book fame. And they will tell us a little bit more about that in just a second. Now, you know the drill because you might have turned up two weeks ago to our inaugural light lunch with myself and Chris Muller. So this is the second one and we'll be taking your ideas for future members to be profiled in the light lunch series. But first of all, the serious stuff. Let's get that out of the way. We're going to ask our two guests, <clears throat> what are the three things that are keeping them awake at night? We'll start with you, Guy. First thing is definitely the poor quality of medium density housing in New Zealand. That's a real problem. That a lot of the stuff that's going up is pretty bad. So that's why we've written this book. It'll help you design and build better medium density. Nice. And it's a good looking book too. What do we need to know about that? Well, it's been put together by, uh, by Britt. Um, she's the mastermind behind this. So there's a lot of information here. Um, and it's really, it's easy to find your way through. It's beautifully color coded, well laid out. It's got some interesting words written by me and by others. It's got some great examples. It's a really, really useful, really good book. And um, I, li I like the content page. Look at that. How simple is that? Plan, design, build, and then a bunch of case studies already built. If okay. you want to get a copy of this, you can go to this um, website. Uh, so ebos.co.nz slash medium dash registration oh. you go there and you can register for a sponsored copy so you'll have somebody come up to your practice with a copy of the, the book hand delivered even hand delivered all yeah. right so medium's keeping you awake at night Brittany what's keeping you awake at night my first thing that I was going to mention was the future of our built environment and how we can reach our sustainability goals and targets mm. so just thinking of new ways to achieve to achieve those things yeah that's a big that's a big target to achieve right yeah so it's really keeping me awake at night <laughs> it's a lot of carbon jargon uh -huh. to unpack we might have to yeah. dig into that on another light lunch if anyone's got any carbon jargon friends it might be a heavier lunch might actually involve some lunch <laughs> <laughs> okay um number two what's keeping you awake at night today? uh the thinking that I, I that i found was prevalent from people um that medium density equals slums and so i was in a conference of master builders recently and quite a few of the builders were of the opinion that medium density is a bad thing and that it's only resulting in, in bad outcomes. And again, I say there's this book here which talks about how to make good medium density. And I think that's really important. Medium density does not need to be bad. I live in medium density. It's a fantastic design. I live in medium density. Building. Good people live in good medium density. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So um, it can, if it's well designed, it can be a great place to live. If it's badly designed, it can be hell on earth. So we need to make sure whatever we do is good. Clearly, we need a guidebook. I'm getting that message. Is anyone else? Um, Brett, what's keeping you? What's the second thing keeping you awake enough? Building on what you said, and also Pam's Eames quote from last the last webinar, uh, how we can give more design to more people for less money. Uh, so the importance of good design within medium density housing, and um, we're kind of starting to do that with flip homes at first light. Um, but yeah, bringing oh. yeah more design, more people for less. No, more, more, yeah. I think um, Britt just hinted at her day job at First Light Studio and with Flip Homes. So that's a good thing to know about as well. And we can track your journey there. Guy, what was the second thing keeping you awake? Uh, oh. That was the second. So oh, the, the third thing even. So the, the third thing is uh, there seems to be a battle uh, for the hearts and minds of the, uh, the people of New Zealand at the moment between two camps. On the one side, there are people that say that uh, heritage buildings must stay and that we can only have heritage buildings. And on the other side, there are people that say heritage buildings equals um, run down old villas and they need to be demolished and replaced by medium density. And again, that's not the answer. Um, so, but it's a real problem. And that's what, when it comes up in, in, the, in the October local body elections and all you guys that get to vote, and you guys, um, is that, you, you know, this is, this is a, um, it's a battleground. That's where the battle has been drawn. And, we don't know what the answer is, but the answer is not extremism. The answer is being moderate and sensible and, and uh, moderate. demolishing crappy buildings and, and building better buildings, but not 
demolishing somehow the finding beautiful heritage. The middle line. Yeah. To help those missing middle yeah. get into homes, and perhaps with a medium solution. And, and Brittany, mm -hmm. what was your third one? My third one was going to be as someone in their late twenties, uh, half of a one half of a full time working couple. If I will ever get into the housing market myself, and kind of what are ways that I can do that, or how can we enable alternative ways to get into the housing market? Things like making co housing an easier process. Uh, yeah, just different those different options, and whether in this environment, if it will happen for me, or how I can make it happen. We will make it happen somehow. Nice. So we need financial solutions to go alongside our designed and built solutions by the sounds of things. Well, that's um that's our pretty serious stuff. Now let's jump into our quick fire five, which is slightly less serious. We'll go Brittany and then Guy. And the questions are, number one, Brittany, which living person do you most admire? So I wanted to pick some person or people that I also knew personally. So I admire people not just for their achievements but also the people that they are so i was going to say guy and pam who are both great um a <laughs> little bit cheap, yeah who are both great activists and role models within well, architecture yeah. um and are always challenging the norms and thinking outside the box but are also great people too oh, and great wow thanks well there you go and, and guy that's um a nice segue into what living person do you most admire well, I was wanting to say, Brett, but that might sound cheesy and you'd never get cheese from me. I'm actually going to say Marnie Dunlop, um, who, who's the, the presenter of the, the Radio New Zealand News at, at 12 to 1 every day. Marnie Dunlop is um, a wonder, she's a role model for the whole of, of New Zealand. Um, she's completely bilingual, um, to Rio and, and English, and she can switch between the two. Um, she's talented and beautiful and um, extremely capable at her job. Which is, which is fantastic, and that's what we should all aim to be. Nice. <clears throat> that sounds great. And I'm sure we could all learn as, um, some more today, myself included. Okay, Brittany, what is your greatest extravagance? Question number two. Uh, one of the yeah, greatest extravagance, probably buying overpriced hand soap that smells amazing. All right. There's like a little bit of a extravagance that I quite enjoy. You'll, okay. never, you'll never find that extravagance for me. <laughs> I don't buy overpriced hand soap. But what I... What I really do think is my extravagance is having lunch each day and I should just take a packed lunch but I don't lunch out. I, I, I like to lunch out so if, if you're in Wellington and you want to have a lunch give me a yell and we'll go out for lunch because it's much more fun having lunch with somebody else than on your own and, and just to qualify this light lunch is so light it's really just okay so we're up to number three <clears throat> Brittany, which talent would you most like to have? If anyone's seen the movie Jumper, uh, it's a, the main character can go from see an image and jump to that location. So I'd love to be able to just travel to an image, like a beautiful beach somewhere in the island, and just be able to do, 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 around. It would be an amazing talent. Sounds like architectural tourism. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> what about you, Guy? Which talent would you most like to have? The ability to use Revit. I've... I've learned MicroStation, Vectorworks, MiniCAD, um, ArchiCAD, um, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I, my brain is full. I've got no room for Revit. So whatever Revit is, I admire you people that can do it, including that means all my students. Uh, and I can't do it. It's too hard. <laughs> awesome. Well, at the New Zealand Institute of Building, we're big fans of anything to do with uh, Autodesk Cloud Computing, just saying. So question number four, Brittany, if you were to die and come back as a person or thing, what would it be? I think I'd really like to be a piwaka waka or a fantail. Um, they exist in a lot of beautiful environments around New Zealand and just be able to fly around and live my best life. Pick up yeah. insects and tell stories. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Guy, what would you be? Uh, I enjoy being in the water. So it's going to be a water creature of some sort. So. I think I might come back as an octopus. Um, so they're, they're at home in water, they can get out onto land, but also they've got eight arms, they can do so many things at the same time, which would be a useful talent to have. I've heard they're quite smart. Yeah. Anyone watching I could write a list? book with one hand and, and go exploring <laughs> and, and eat some sea urchins with the other hand and still have four hands left over. Or seven books, because yeah. um, a rumour is medium's not your first book, but we'll get to that at the end. Brittany, the last question, what is your motto? 
short and sweet, I was going to say attitude is everything, which is a little bit cheesy, but I think, yeah, having a good attitude in life and how you deal with different problems is important and helps you out in a lot of areas. So, yeah. Fantastic. And, and, and what's the genesis of that quote? Uh, it was actually came from high school. We had different quotes every year. And so the principal tried to, yeah, install a different, get, get the students thinking about something different every year. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Guy, what is your motto? My motto is a very worthwhile motto, and it's one that I never keep, and that is always take a packed lunch to work. Um, and I never take a packed lunch to work because it's so boring making your own lunch. I'd rather go out for lunch. Clearly. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a lunch thing going on here. Hopefully everyone out there is eating or have brought a packed lunch or a delicious bought lunch or something, some kind of lunch, seeing as it's lunch time. Um, <laughs> not, not that you know here, we just have hard hats to eat. All right. So that is, our, is there any other comments you've got? Because you've been so good at keeping to time. Um, is there anything else that you want to throw out there? For example, the previous books you did, Guy, and I bring this up because in two weeks' time, we will be having a light lunch that looks a little bit at mid-rise timber. And we'll be hearing from Denise Austin, who is the chair of our Wellington or Central Regional Committee here at the Institute of Building. She's also with XLAM, which is the original homegrown cross-laminated timber solution. Um, and we'll also be hearing from Damon Otto, who's currently got a role um, advising around mid-rise timber with uh, LT McGuinness. So that's who we'll be seeing in two weeks' time. But I just throw to you, Guy, because there might be a little bit of mid-rise timber in your book authoring background that you'd want to advise us about? Yeah, so well, so the first book was on tall buildings, yeah. and it was really aimed at, um, uh, at office buildings. And so mm -hmm. the book is called Tall. Uh, but you can find that. We'll, we'll give you a link or something. Mm -hmm. um, somehow. But the second book was, which nobody knows about, uh, really, is called Modern Apartment Design. And it's heavily focused on using uh, mass timber, engineered timber, as a, as a means for medium, uh, for, for, for modern high rise um, apartments. And so uh, it really it breaks into that, that, um, that sort of ground of, of using CLT, using LVL. The best way to put them together to make apartments and things. And there's a there's a building that's just been finished uh, in Christchurch at Clearwater at um, Keys, which is a five-story high building, uh, partially sponsored by MPI, the Ministry for Primary Industries, as an example for how New Zealand can build out of out of our engineered products. Um, so you know, timber is great. It's it's a third sorry it's a fifth the weight of concrete, um, so it's a very lightweight uh, solution. Um, and it has to be designed in a different way than, than a concrete building, but you can get some uh, very fast assembly of buildings. Uh, so it's a really good, it's a really good, interesting solution. And I think, personally, I think that it's one of the futures for New Zealand that we're going to be building a lot more mid-rise and a lot more than we're going to be timber. 100%. So that mid-rise construction project is on the MPI. Uh, website, I think, also connected into the new Timber Design Centre, and we'll send out a link with the follow-up to this website and in the show notes too, once it goes on YouTube, uh, because you're absolutely right, the Primary Growth Partnership, the MPI-funded um, project with Red Stag and others, is all about sharing information transparently, so we'll make sure that everyone is connected into that knowledge-sharing aspect. Hey, uh, Brittany, just on the um, timber aspect, with First Light Studio, have you been involved with any cross-laminated timber or LVL timber solutions? Or? Uh, we're actually building a, or finishing off a townhouse uh, development in Palms and North, which is all out of CRT. Um, so I was a little bit involved in that. So that's probably the main one we've had on recently. Yeah. You also had some other buildings down in Queenstown out of rammed earth and CLT, oh, which is yeah. an interesting uh, mix, with especially first light. with first yeah. light, yeah. So, you know, the, the, the Queenstown uh, controls over what materials you're allowed to use, and so they've got a very strictly restricted palette. So we broke all the rules. Um, so the rules did not include um, copper uh, on the roof or um, rammed earth on the walls or CLT indoors. Um, but so we, we used all of those. We broke all the rules and they look fantastic. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's probably worth noting that when Guy is not authoring books or um, assisting at First Light Studio, he is a senior lecturer. Senior, slash... senior lecturer at, at uh, Victoria University of Wellington. 
they moved the comma at great cost to be Victoria, mm -hmm. University of Wellington, whatever. Uh, Take so, a cab, um, uh, no, no. Uh, we'll, we'll get that right for next time. We'll get it right in the show notes, even. Um, it's hearing a walker, I think. To hear the hearing a walker. walker. Yeah. yeah, cool. Okay, good to have that captured on film. So, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to slice and dice. That's the end of the light lunch for now. Keep focused for the next one coming up in two weeks with Denise Austin and Damon Osho. And we've got a couple of other things coming out of the New Zealand Institute of Buildings, which is we have got an industry insights webinar series coming up soon, just in case you forget who we are. And we also have a podcast series, Tall Stories, Tales from the Built Environment. Sound intriguing, cue mysterious music. And Tall stories. that's us for now, signing mm. out. Thanks for coming, folks. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. See ya.